Well, a new survey has revealed Australians were more concerned about the cost of living than The Voice during the final days of the referendum campaign. While 8 in 10 voters wanted the government to focus on cost of living issues, just 1 in 10 felt the same about The Voice. At the same time, the government's overall performance rating dropped to a record low. Joining me now, as he does every week, is Redbridge Group Director Simon Welsh. Simon, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Let's start with the voice loss. Of course, the defeat of the referendum was crushing. It was something that the Prime Minister committed to from the very beginning. He couldn't get this over the line. So how is he looking after this vote? Yeah, thanks, Danica. It's. I think it's a really critical moment uh, for, for the government and for the Prime Minister personally at the moment. Uh, I mean, the, the, yes, the yes vote, in, in a sense, I don't think the outcome will necessarily define uh, sort of voter reaction to, to the Prime Minister and those sorts of things, but I think how they now respond to this vote uh, is, is very important, particularly on their left flank in terms of being able to, to do something meaningful around Indigenous affairs. But in our suburbs, in our you know, sort of the middle and outer suburbs of, of, the, of the major cities around the country, and even in our regional centres. So, so what we've seen, as you sort of alluded to in your intro there, is this massive cost of living pressure that is coming to bear on, on you know, the majority of Australians. And it's, and it's profound. Um, and it really is profound. I mean, we saw yesterday, I think, Food Bank Australia released some statistics around 3.6, 3.7 million households are experiencing food insecurity. You know, it's where they're compromising on, on the food that they buy um, just to keep their heads above water. So I think what makes this really critical at this moment now is if, if I can just put in a little bit of context. So, so what we've seen sort of during the early parts of, of the Albanese government was, was a sense of hope. There's a hopefulness, new government, you know, fresh start. You, you get that sort of sense of optimism. You know, we, we call it the honeymoon period. And, and what we've seen over the course of this year is that optimism, that hope erode. And, and to the point now, as, you know, as we're talking about, the people under extreme pressure, they feel pretty invisible to this government. Large chunks of this country feel pretty invisible to this, to this government. So what voters tend to do in, in that situation is they start to create reasons. What, why are we being neglected? Why are we being sort of made to feel invisible? And and there's sort of you know, a, a few a few camps. So, you know, one reason could be that they just don't care. Now, largely for the prime minister, he, he has a sort of a, a reputation and image around here that does protect him a, a bit around that. So, you know, the, the thing that we consistently get around Albanese is that you know he seems like a nice guy. It seems like he does care. So the care argument for most people sort of doesn't stick. You do get a bit of, oh, they seem more interested in, you know, foreign affairs and foreign relations than they do about us. You get a bit of that. But, but largely, they sort of tick the care box. Where they then run into trouble is, is this idea of, well, do they have the will to do what's required? And do they have the ability, the capability? Are they up for the job? And that's where we're starting to see some some of this negativity sort of sort of uh, come around as I say as, as voters are trying sort of trying to explain what why are they absent why am I invisible to them, you know is it that they don't have the the strength to take on the vested interests and do something big about energy prices and the cost of living and the cost of housing, uh, or is it just that they don't get it they don't understand it they're not up to it so there's some pretty big questions that that the prime minister and his government need to answer. Um, and, you know, it's taken 18 months to get to this point. It's probably going to take them 18 months to turn it around. And so suddenly you start looking at the length of the runway that they've got and there's not a lot of time left. So, yeah, I think we're at a really critical juncture. Oh, look, absolutely, there's no doubt. And as you said, we've just had the voice campaign and now the Prime Minister is over in the United States. He's got a trip to China coming up next month. How is that perceived by voters, his, his overseas trips, at a time when, as you said, people are looking at their own hip pocket? Yeah. Look, I think I think the timing on this one is actually quite unfortunate in, in, that, in the retail politics sense. You know, I'm, you can make the argument strategically it needs to be done, et cetera, but in retail politics... I think I think the timing is is unfortunate. You know, as I say, people, particularly those outer suburban, really stressed, economically stressed voters, were looking for a bit of a reset. And and the reset isn't the prime minister going over to to the US. The the reset is, as I say, that bold action on the economy. Do something about cost of living. Do something substantive 
um, use the levers of power to to improve our lives. And what they're getting is okay. We're, we're going to go overseas. So I think there's some re yeah, some some genuine retail polit political sort of um, problems for them in, in in this being seen to be externally focused when there's enough crises running, you know, simultaneously here in this country that should keep any government busy. Do you think though that voters believe that Peter Dutton and and, and his party would do do more in this space, or is it still a case where? People are genuinely hopeful that Anthony Albanese will come to the table when it comes to cost of living. I think they'd be hopeful that uh, the Prime Minister and the government would come to the party because they don't want to have to wait, you know, 18 months, two years to, to get relief. Um, so there's certainly there's certainly hope that that you know things will be turned around. Whether you like Peter Dutton or not, one thing that voters do land on him all the time is that he's pretty tough. Um, and, you know, again, they come back to this thing that we, we need tough leadership at the moment. So so the, the hit on, on Anthony Albanese is that, well, just maybe he isn't tough enough for, 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 the, for the job and for the challenges that we've got. So I think in that sense, you know, and you throw in the traditional kind of, well, Liberals, the party of the economy, and they're, they're the good economic managers, you throw all that in, and I think at, at the very least, what it does is it makes it very difficult for Labor to chip any further into to liberal to the liberal base at the next election. I think you know what we saw at the last election was probably going to be the high watermark, unless they can turn things around in the next eighteen months. Um, but but what it, so that's sort of as a minimum and, and as a as a maximum problem. Then yeah, you, you could likely see, particularly in the more economic stressed outer suburbs, um, a drift to the Liberals uh, of a of a considerable nature. Fascinating as always. Simon, we have to leave it there. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us.